Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Uh, how important are conventions to you as a creator? Um, this is, I got this question from a, a fan, customer, who asked, uh, you know, how important are conventions to creators? And I think, it, generally speaking, pretty important, I would say, especially if you're an artist. If you're a writer, less so. But if you're an artist, it's a good chance to do a, a large number of things. It can kind of hypercharge generally your presence. So early on in your career, if you're just starting, it's a good place to get kind of a portfolio of art up. Um, I, I like to say, and, and by the way, I'm sure some people who are uh, creators will have a different opinion from what I'm about to say. So I'm, I'm coming at this from a, a retailer perspective, somebody who's vended comics, uh, at a uh, convention before, somebody who's been a guest, somebody who's gone there to try and make some business. And so this is from my lens, from my, as they say, my perspective, which may not be the same as, as creators. It's also from what I've heard from others. But when you're very early on in your career, um, it's hard to get a table. It's hard to be able to show. But if you're lucky enough to do it, and in many cases, uh, I think that people who have gone to the smaller cons, the more local cons, when they are um, new in their career, uh, they don't sell a lot, but they are they, they kind of express the experience was very, very valuable. Being able to kind of see that environment, see, uh, get customer feedback kind of firsthand in some cases. Um, it can be tough because if you were a fan, if you were somebody who enjoyed comics and you go to a comic convention, you'd see like, uh, you know, there's Art Adams with a giant line or there's... Um, you know, John Byrne, and he's selling all the well, while. John Byrne didn't really do stuff like that. But uh, J. Scott Campbell is another one. Um, I had somebody tell me once, like, I would go to cons and see J. Scott Campbell, and he's selling what has to be thousands of dollars, uh, tens, uh, just so much, uh, so much money of stuff he's selling, and he's got a big line, a lot of attention. His booth is never empty. And then, you know, I decided to break into comics, so I, create, I got a table, and I started a little local con, you know, and, uh, you know, I'd get like one person, you know, every 30 minutes. And it was very depressing. It's like, well, okay, um, <laughs> you know, one, you're talking about like J. Scott Campbell at New York City Comic Con or Emerald City Comic Con versus you at, uh, you know, the Puyallup Fair. And it's going to be a, there. Yeah, it's going to be a major difference. Got to keep that ego in check. You got to, you don't expect J. Scott Campbell like numbers. In fact, don't, you know, don't, don't even fantasize about, uh, you know, oh, but I don't expect a lot of, but what if, what if there was just some amazing thing that happened and suddenly my, my table was the talk of the town. It's, it's not going to happen and you're just going to depress yourself and you're going to miss out on the good learnings when you're first getting into a convention. And, and the learnings are, you know, a different type of networking, not networking to kind of suck up to different editors or writers, but just teaching you how to talk. And that, that sounds weird. Um, I guess the best way to put it is I met lots of different creators and editors, people in comics over the years, and you could tell the ones that are just very awkward around people. Um, you need to develop a good kind of cadence of being able to kind of say, you know, to strangers, hey, how you doing? Um, here's some of what I've got. What do you like reading? Kind of this good back and forth. I have watched fairly early artists in their careers uh, manage their table, knowing that they're not going to get a J. Scott Campbell audience at their table, but basically be able to, you know, use that time to build up a an audience. Um, one very smart, uh, and I, I can't remember her name. I, it kills me, but uh, she basically, knowing she wasn't going to get a lot of attention at the table. She had, you know, certainly more of her work up there in almost a gallery format so she could kind of present what she does. So if anything, it was almost a portfolio review for other people in comics who might be coming by. But also she had front and center uh, a mailing list, like sign up here and I'll, you know, I'll send you a newsletter. I'll send you a, an email um, to, to all the people who sign up telling you what I'm on. And it was very successful. I mean, it's like, and that, that was a very successful thing. It's like, come look at my booth. Uh, come look at my table. I've got some artwork up. Hey, you may not want to buy it. And I'm relatively new. So, you know, that's going to, a lot of speculators are not going to buy stuff at that table. It's going to be people who truly like the art. But here's something free for you. The free was, hey, sign up for my little uh, newsletter. I think she printed like little cards, like little half page cards that had uh, a tiny little like bit of her art and a website on there. And it was clever. And what happened, I saw her the next year and she's like, yeah, I've got a mailing list of, uh, you know, over uh, 2000 people. And that's, 
that is good. That That's gold. You can start to direct those people to your project. So when you're starting out, it's more about kind of getting your name out there, getting some recognition, um, and learning how to talk. And part of the deal is, you know, be, learning, <laughs> and here's this word that everybody hates, learning good customer service, learning how to, when somebody comes up to go, hey, what are you, you know, you don't seem interested in buying something, but uh, what are you interested in? What kind of stuff do you read? Oh, tell me about what you're liking. Um, I, I've watched people very effectively at the con strike up conversations, people walking by like, hey, who are, who are the artists you're really into? And basically, it's like free market research. People are just coming up and saying, here's what I like to read. Here's what I like to read. And it, it just, it made, it, it made the person smarter who was there. And uh, so I, I think definitely, if you're a creator, I've, I've heard creators at times go, well, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the smaller shows early in my career because it'll be pigeonholed as a small artist. And that is absurd. That That's just get that out of your head. That's a stupid way of thinking. Uh, it is, you need the practice. You need to be able to get, you know, your style down. And again, it's about, it's about giving you a couple like secret weapons in your arsenal beyond your art or your writing or whatever it happens to be. Um, it's about, if you can be the artist who can come in and got a good style, a little bit unique, fine. You know, you don't, you're, you're not, you don't have a, you know, J Scott Campbell skills, you know, but you're a solid artist. And you can pick up a couple skills, uh, like you heard some from the interview with Jim's Up, which is an excellent interview. If you haven't heard that on this channel, go to the interviews playlist, go check that out. Great, to, you know, he, he gave two interviews, both just filled with good information. Uh, but part of what you need to do is give yourself some secret weapons, and your secret weapon can be great communicator, has a good friendly kind of style with uh, people who work in the business and outside, be uh, be somebody who's personable. Um, be somebody who, you know, gets their stuff done on time, somebody responsible. I'll tell you, and I've heard this from editors directly who have gone to Artist Alley, seen the tables, and have made comments like, this artist is organized. You see how they stuff, have their stuff kind of, you know, well positioned? And this artist looks like they just dumped a bunch of shit all over the desk, and it's it's just a chaos mess. It's like, I'm, I, I, feel, more, I feel more comfortable hiring the organized person over here. Uh, that, believe it or not, that's, I've heard that, I've heard that more than once. So you, you know, get some little secret weapons in your arsenal and then people will pick you for projects over others. You know, friendly responds, has a good kind of back and forth. And when I say friendly, I don't mean, you don't have to give them a hand job. You know, you just, just, I mean, just friendly. I mean, be, sounding and acting like a human being in comics, believe it or not, if you can sound like a reasonable person, I'll give you an example. Um, Liam Sharp is a very personable guy. He sounds, I mean, he's a big guy. He's, uh, he's got, I'm not intimidating, but I mean, he, he does look like he could do some damage if he ever decided to just start throwing punches, but he's a, he's a, he's a good guy and he is friendly. Like you go talk to him, he can carry a conversation that isn't awkward and insane. It's just, it's like, Hey, I'll do this for you. And you know, everything else it, it's, he's a, he's a great guy. Um, didn't have his nose buried in a, in a tablet or something. He was out there kind of smiling, wanting to shake hands and, and, you know, grow his audience. And this is, this is good for him. He's a good guy. Uh, that's, it, it goes a long way because you can go up and down the aisle. Uh, there's, um, who was a guy who was disappointing at the, the con? I was surprised by it. Uh, Kyle Higgins, uh, was there. And it was weird because Kyle had a couple of assistants with him, and he 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 seemed mostly interested in talking to assistants. Now, granted, this is just an observation, so if it's an unfair observation, apologize. But this is just, and I'm I'm trying to be I'm not trying to be careful in my words. I'm trying to be clear about what I observed. I hung out at the tables for a while, uh, talking to Claremont and and a couple of the others, and so I saw a snapshot of his time. Now, you know con run over a couple days and um he you know definitely different things could happen but in the little snapshot of time that i saw um i saw a behavior that i've seen a lot at conventions with a lot of different people where the uh the attention is really given to the assistants and the friends behind the table and not to the customers who are coming in customers are coming in we're, we're buying stuff getting stuff but in some cases he would be engrossed in a conversation with someone else and kind of let one of the assistants handle the purchase or, or friend. I couldn't tell whether it was friends or assistants that were there. But anyway, it's about kind of learning those skills to, to engage. 
So I, I, I went way off track on this video talking about kind of newcomers to the cons. Uh, for people who are not newcomers, who are, you know, who have been there a while, then yeah, it's definitely it's where you sell some art. You can make, you can be J. Scott Campbell. You can make uh, tens of thousands or more of, of, of cash at these cons. And, um, and it, it's a, it's a good, it's good financially, certainly as a, as an artist. Now as a writer, um, it's still valuable, but a little bit, you know, different. I think for a writer, you know, you got to, in some cases you could find a, a gimmick, uh, that sounds wrong, but just find some thing that you're going to do. And, and you're going to be as, as part of you, what's the, what's a draw and the attraction to come talk to you, uh, or to come or to, you know, what are you going to do at the con? I think a lot of writers don't really have a good plan in mind for what, uh, what that might be. And so they show up to the con and they kind of wander a little bit. And then they, they're like, I, you know what I could use? Uh, I could use some alcohol and maybe some weed um, and, and maybe some meth, whatever it happens to be. And they just, they, they head off in that direction. And then, you know, that's, that's a lot less, uh, well, that gets to those other videos I've made about uh, behavior at the cons. But generally speaking, yeah, I mean, if you're a creator, I think the cons is an important part of your business. And, you know, if nothing else, we've seen in this last year with COVID, you know, many creators comment about how it's impacted their bottom line. And I actually think, and not to be Mr. Doom and Gloom here, but I actually think the true negative impact uh, to the bottom line hasn't been felt yet. You know, people are seeing it as a Hey, I wasn't able to go to cons last year and, um, you know, I made less money. It's like you, but you also made less promotion for yourself. And so I think a lot of people, they're going to be reset a little bit. I think there's been to some of the early cons that have opened up. It's like people are so relieved to be getting back to a convention that they're spending more money than they should have. So it looks like business is up. Well, my prediction here in the next year to year and a half is that we're going to see business go down. Because it's it's this delay is going to cause some interesting effects in people, um, and it, we'll we'll see we'll see how that all goes. We we still may get in, into very much a demand kind of buyer's market for a lot of this stuff, but I, I do think there's a, a I, I've just seen so many creators get better over time um, at at how they do the cons, how they run their table, how they run their business, and you see them kind of gaining experience, gaining practice. And this year, I think, is going to turn a lot of people backward, but um, but we'll see. Anyway, there you go. Answer to your question, and that's that's what you get out of cons. Thanks for listening.